Hi and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Alex and in this tutorial I'm going to try to explain to you how you can use Marmoset Toolback 2 point and up to create some really nice looking renders of your models. So you are welcome to make a donation if you want to see more of these tutorials made by me. This would really help me uh, concentrate more and more time to create uh, different tutorials. So check out the description of this video below to see where you can donate and thank you for that. So back to the tutorial. Uh, when we open Marmoset Toolback uh, uh, it looks something like this. So we here we have our scene which uh, represents everything that we have in, in the scene currently. So now we have only sky and main, main camera. And here we have uh, render settings, animation settings and up here is the default menu and on the right side there is always going to be one at least one material in this area because that's the default feature so if you can click on it and you can see below we have a bunch of uh, features that we can set to uh, manipulate our material and you can also rename your material by, by clicking on the name and type in something new and you can also duplicate it by clicking here on duplicate and then apply this to a different uh, model in your scene you can also delete it by selecting it and press delete on the keyboard to import the mesh to your scene you can go to file import mesh or press ctrl b on the keyboard and we're just going to use one of my latest um, obj's so and this is a model that i create in 3ds max if you want to see how i created this one you can check out the tutorials i made about the complete process of creating this low poly uh, model for games so you're welcome to check those tutorials out. So right when we um, import the mesh into our scene on the left side we can see the group and every part that was uh, grouped in 3ds Max. So you can also move around these parts so they are not uh, under this uh, grouped area anymore so just click on it and drag it out until you can see this black line is out of the uh, grouped area and which means if we for example turn off by clicking on this eye uh, we can see everything that is grouped is being hidden and because this is not uh, a part of the grouped uh, area anymore we can see uh, it's uh, separated and it's visible so we can turn this back on and if we want to apply this again to grouped area just click and drag it pop up in this grouped area so uh, let me just show you a few features of the sky so just click on the sky and as you can see uh, on the left we can see uh, a, bunch of, a bunch of features we can set to manipulate our sky so first of all if you hold shift and left click and uh, move the mouse you can see you can rotate the sky or the background image you can also move this slider to uh, create the same the same effect and here the brightness is self-explanatory it really sets the uh, the value of brightness uh, of the background image of the sky Another uh, thing about uh, moving around your uh, preview area is you can you can hold Alt and left click and you can rotate the view and you can rotate the background holding Shift. You can zoom in, zoom out with the mouse uh, scroll uh, button or hold alt and right click and move the mouse and you can also hold shift and alt to move the 
camera left right up and down so back to the sky you can also uh, select a different one you can uh, even uh, import an image from your hard drive so if you have any HDR uh, images created that you can use uh, as your background just click here on image and import it to the scene and you can also click here on presets and it, this will pop up and you can see you can also open and save as and create some additional uh, presets if you uh, save it in data backslash sky uh, folder on your marmoset folder so you just click on it and it will change as you can see here so just uh, make sure you uh, use something that is appropriate for your model so the next thing is you can also turn turn off or just change a little bit of your background image by uh, going down here to backdrop and you can see under mode we have bird sky currently selected and with background uh, brightness you set the brightness of the background but it, it, it will not affect the brightness of the that is uh, point pointed to the model so uh, these are two different things under uh, skylight and brightness of the backdrop so this is just a preview how it's going to look under render but the brightness of the sky is uh, being untouched you can also blur your background image or make it really sharp depends on your prefer personal preference so this is really a nice feature and you can also select let's say ambient sky and set the brightness here you can also set the sky which is not blurred and it cannot be blurred it ain't just uh, you can just uh, change the backdrop backdrop brightness you cannot blur it and you can also just use a color flat color which you can set here which any color that you want and this is really nice for a clean render so you can add additional light to your scene uh, and if you want it to turn with the sky you just click here on this sky image anywhere and as you can see we additional uh, additional uh, light is added and in this position in the, uh, 000 coordinates and if you click on it you can see it's a directional light and this uh, arrow this white arrow represents uh, where the light is pointing and if you want to move something in your scene you just uh, use these arrows uh, to reposition it and you can also turn it uh, with these circles so this is the same for all the objects in your scene so with the directional light you can also set the brightness of the light as you can see it affects the it affects the object and if you go back to sky you can see here child brightness you can also set the child brightness here so these are two different uh, settings that you can apply to your um, to your child light make sure you using uh, directional light you can also use the spotlight by just clicking here on the type and spot but now uh, the brightness is only affected with uh, with this slider and under sky no matter how you set uh, child brightness uh, value it will not affect the light so just make sure this is something you need to know uh, and now if you hold uh, shift and move 
the mouse button by right by left clicking on it you can see it turns the sky and also turns the light if we would go back to sky and turn it on blurred sky as you can see everything is being turned w because the sky uh, the light that we applied is uh, seen as a child of this sky you can also made it out uh, and if you will turn now you can see only the background images the sky image is being uh, rotated just pull it down and again you can see it's, t it's turning with the sky image you can also delete the light by selecting it and uh, pressing delete on the keyboard you can also rename it by clicking on the name and rename it or you can also delete it by going to sky and right click on the light icon and it's going to delete it you can also set the color of this uh, light by clicking here on this color and just select something you like and you can also see how it affects your model and then you can uh, change the shape of the of the light this comes in handy when you want to affect the shadow areas that are being created uh, from these models uh, but just for the default values uh, this is going to work to just uh, affect the brightness of the model so uh, the next thing is a spot which affects the spot uh, if you have the spot selected spot angle spot sharpness spot vignette okay you can also change the distance of the light so if it's not affecting your model just move this slider and as you can see here the spot vignetting it's going to be visible here spot sharpness and with spot sharpness and spot vignetting you can set the vignetting from at the edges of this light when you have spot selected so if you want to uh, apply a different look to your model you can you can set it with this spot values back to the right directional light you can also under beneath under gel you can set add an image to your um, to your light i'm just going to use the some image that i have on my uh, hard drive and if you turn the brightness really hard harsh you can see uh, it looks like uh, texture is has been added to the to the light and it's going through this uh, image and it's affecting uh, how the light uh, is uh, affecting your model so this is a really nice trick to uh, add some additional effect light effect to your uh, scene and if you uh, move this slider get it styling your gel more tiles, uh, small detail, less tiles, uh, larger details. So just delete it if you don't want to use it. And just play around with these settings, they're a really nice feature. Uh, you can also turn off and turn on cast shadows. We're going to go really close. Cast shadows, you can see it affects them and this is pretty much it for uh, basic light, light settings so you can also uh, rotate, move and scale all of your scene objects you just have to uh, select the object you want to uh, transform and just click on transform and you can set the position manually or just drag these handles as I said before or rotate it with uh, moving these sliders 
and even uh, you can even uh, rescale it, resize it. Uh, now the light is not going to resize because because uh, it's not resizable. But if we uh, select something like this, and we can resize it. We undo that. You can also duplicate any of your object in your scene. For example, if you want to uh, duplicate the complete group, you just need to select the name of the group and duplicate selection or press Ctrl D on the keyboard. If you want to delete it, just uh, select the name and just press delete on the keyboard. You can also duplicate a separate part of your model again control D and there are two models now uh, two parts and you can also delete them so we are going to duplicate it and just move it aside because we are going to need it afterwards these two models have the same default material applied to it and now we're going to look into materials so when you click on the selected material uh, a bunch of features uh, pops up below so first of all the normal map and it's really self-explanatory just click just click on this uh, checkerboard and find the image you are looking for and as you can see it immediately uh, shows in the viewport on both of the models now you can also let's just leave this as default and just duplicate this one and name it parts delete you can delete the map by clicking on this X you can also flip X Y or Z axis and you can also uh, use object space uh, normal map you just need to tick here you can apply materials to your models in two ways just for example we're going to uh, the name of the group and then just select the material that we want to apply to it and click on apply and as you can see it applied the selected material to the whole group to the every part of the group but you can also uh, drag click and drag your material to a separate part so if we want only this part to be affected by the material just click and drag and let go on this part and as you can see the other parts are not uh, having the same material as we can see here here are all of the parts uh, applied with the normal map and here is only this one the next one is the gloss map you can use your custom gloss map or you can use the gloss map in an alpha channel in an alpha layer if you have a specular map created this way so let me just show you how to create a specular map with gloss map uh, in an alpha layer so in order to get the glossiness the gloss map into an alpha channel of specular map we just need to open up both of them so here I have the specular map and here is the gloss map and then just select the layer control A on the keyboard to select everything control C to copy it and on specular map go under channels and create a new create a new uh, channel which is named alpha and with the alpha selected control V to paste the gloss map control D to uh, to unselect everything and just click on RGB and turn off alpha and now just save this file save as and you need to save it as Targa or it won't um, recognize the alpha channel so Targa, battlestick, 
Pickler Plus Plus and make sure you have 32 bits per pixel uh, selected and OK. So there are two different ways to uh, use the class map. If you have it separated from the specular map, just find it and import it. And then just go down. We're going to look into a little bit uh, in a second. And then on the specular map, just select specular map as you can see there are some color deviations and some dust looking deviations uh, created this way in the gloss map if I wouldn't have a uh, gloss map created I can use specular map with the gloss map uh, in its alpha channel so this is how a model looks when a separate gloss map and specular map is applied to it and let's just duplicate it and let's just name it so we know that this one is going to be using a specular map with a gloss map in alpha channel so just click and I'm going to import specular map with uh, gloss map in its alpha channel make sure under channel you have A selected for alpha and then just select this model that you want to apply to it and and apply a gloss map in a specular map to it now you can see they are not the same but if we uh, also apply a specular map in a specular map folder, uh, you can see these two models are looking exactly the same. So the only difference is that in this one we have a gloss map that is a totally separate uh, map, and in this one we have in both uh, a specular map applied to it although we have an alpha channel in a specular map that consists uh, the gloss map so the next thing is albedo map this is the diffuse map and just apply to it as before there's really nothing special to say about the albedo map if you know uh, how to create texture maps in Photoshop this is the basic uh, map to be created and of course you have these uh, handles possibility to increase or decrease the glossiness and intensity of the specularity so if your model doesn't look great under these uh, lighting circumstances you can set it with these uh, handles and there are a bunch of other maps that you can apply to your models so just uh, make sure you check them out you can also uh, separate the occlusion map from your diffuse map and just apply to it and just apply it let's just see if we have it yep it's really a subtle difference in the look of the model you can see on these parts but uh, this way you have the possibility to set the intensity of ambient occlusion if you have it in a separate map you can also use the cavity map if you have it and even the emissive map emissive map and the emissive map lets you uh, lets you tell 
the software which parts of your model should be lighted even though they are not uh, they're not lighted from the light source so they're glowing all the time so the intensity and you can also play around with the color that is going to be applied to the selected parts and you can also use the transparency maps uh, and this is pretty much the quick overview of the materials in Marmoset 2 back 2.06 so under render tab you can set a different a bunch of different settings uh, I use viewport as a default I never change this and stereo I never uh, use any of stereo mode this is uh, to create a 3D image so you can look at it with your 3D goggles and the scene uh, is really useful if you want to show the wireframe as you can see here if you turn it on it shows uh, the poly distribution and you can set the strength of the lines and the color of the lines and it is always wise to turn everything on here local reflection ambient occlusion high res shadows and front face shadows and then just play around with the occl occlusion strength and occlusion size to get the effect that you like uh, under watermark if you have a pro version you can turn on or turn off the watermark of uh, Marmoset toolback and this is it for render tab the easiest way to understand the difference between scene rotation and camera rotation is that when you turn on a scene turntable uh, all the objects are being pivoted around the pivot point and the lighting stays the same so if you play it you can see the back side let's say this is the back side and this is the front side the front side and the back side uh, under the same lighting circumstances and if you turn the camera you're pivoting with the camera around your model so you see the front face uh, in a different uh, lighting circumstances than the back face as you can see here here is the light version and then when we come to the back part you can see we can see it how it would look uh, on the back side when it's dark and to turn the sky you're just turning the lightning conditions around the pivot point and looking at the model from the same angle to add another camera to your scene just go to scene new camera or press ctrl k on the keyboard and immediately on the top left corner you're going to see its camera one selected and if you click here you can see you can choose between main camera and camera one and now you can just uh, change the view of this camera and if you want to uh, switch between different views this is really a quick way to do it so if you select the camera let's just reposition it by dragging it under the camera and if you click on it you can see you can transform it as all the objects and under controls you have a bunch of different features that you can change you can change the field of view which is really great and then for the post effects for the final renders it's really nice to have some uh, depth of fill and you just need to find the right settings and then just near blur let me just rearrange it a little bit so you can see how which is the which is the near blur and far blur near blur is here near near the camera as you can see we can change only this blur with this slider and the far blur is the blur that is on the other side of the 
sharp edges so you can really uh, make a nice effect with these blur uh, settings and max bokeh size you just play around with this um, and you will see what it uh, creates so flare, 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 I don't know if it's going to be shown uh, in these settings so let me just select the main camera and with the flare you're going to see here the bluish the bluish flare around the around the models so this is another effect that it can add some additional value to your render distortion you can even distort the look of your scene and I don't really uh, use this and then the post effects the post effects you can set you can use the presets there are some of them here or you can create your own um, so you can change the color or, uh, of uh, by clicking on the curves you can change the colors on uh, all the RGB and if you want to uh, get rid of uh, this uh, point you just click on it and drag it out of the curve editor and you can also use only the green uh, channel or uh, any of other channel so here are also some of the presets that you can use so just look through them and if you find something that is that is okay for your model then just select it and then the sharpen is really self-explanatory it's really it really adds sharpness to your model as you can see here we um, this is really not uh, good looking but uh, minor changes can really add some value to the render uh, the bloom it's going to add some uh, halo around the models so this is another way to um, get some effect and the vignette around the corners of the render and you can soften the edge of the vignette grain uh, to get it more uh, photorealistic uh, look so if it is down to zero it's really uh, computer created image and if you add some grain to it it much more looks like the old uh, photorealistic um, effects and now under file you can open scene by control O new scene control N open recent save scene save scenes and import mesh quit edit undo redo preferences check for updates da -da view scene you can add a new light here a new camera you can s browse for skies duplicate selection group selection and here are the capture uh, commands so to capturing the image like a screenshot uh, just press F11 image and open so just uh, press F10 if you want to uh, capture the image and watch it in your uh, selected browser so this is the default windows view so as you can see it's it's really not a render of a model it's only a screenshot of a model but it looks like uh, the real thing so this is a really quick way to get the to get the image to be shown to others and image to clipboard this is the same you can now uh, paste it anywhere and under turntable you can also go under settings and select the size of the image you want to capture the sampling and the format and if it you want the transparency to be included and under rotation you just select which part you want to be rotated which way 
the frame rate and the duration so let's just uh, create a quick capture of a turntable it's going to uh, create images that you can then uh, compile in After Effects or some other uh, video editing software create a new folder with 30 uh, images and in these 30 images the other uh, object is being uh, rotated for 360 degrees one time so if you set under settings 15 frame rate duration 1 it's going to create 15 images which make uh, 360 degrees turn so uh, you can also press space on the keyboard to uh, get rid of uh, these side panels so just to see how it's going to look in uh, render as you can see we can see the new camera that we just created and this image is not going to be rendered if we uh, capture the image as you can see it's not it's not there it's just the uh, models so don't worry about seeing these uh, icons of your cameras or lights it's not going to show in your render so this is pretty much it about uh, an overview how to use Marmoset 2.06 check out the rest of my channel uh, and subscribe to my channel share this video and till next time bye